Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanaliz at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this next match is going to be between Disnuggle Base and Dimefriend on Intersection. So let's get started. Snuggle Base going for the Cloaky Bot Factory, and Dimefriend going for Hovercraft. We finally got it back. I was wondering where that was, but this map is a good map for vehicles, so it's a good map for Hovercraft, because Hovercraft is like vehicles, but better. At least currently. That may change, but for the time being, that is the way things are. Anyway, Snuggle Base going for pretty heavy Glaive Assault right off the bat. Looks like five Glaives most likely. No, just three. I wasn't sure if a couple of them would go to scout out the corners as well, but it looks like no. Dime Friend, on the other hand, with an opening Dagger and Quill going for a bit more of an economic start. Not so aggressive. Likely they're going to be... Oh, no, it looks like they're going for defense, actually. Setting up a couple Daggers as Watch... Uh, like, not quite watchdogs. I mean, they're pretty close to the main base. They're not watching much. Nothing that nothing else can see. And Snuggle Base with another four glaives in the back. Looks like they're also waiting to get attacked. Neither player really all that encouraged to attack the other. Actually, as it is, glaives coming in, already taking a fair amount of damage, managing to get away. Should be able to... Ooh, not quite heal up. That glaive nearly died. It's gonna die very shortly. Maybe. Maybe not. Actually, no. That... Wow, that health regen. I mean, it takes five seconds, but, you know, those five seconds have passed, and now the health regen kicks in. Daggers, on the other hand, do not have health regen, so now that Snuggle Base has basically managed to get some scouting in without losing anything, we're actually seeing quite a bit of a bold play from them coming in here, Dimefrain's going to be coming from the side. This is perfect for Dimefrain, not so much for Snugglebase. Snugglebase grouping up a little bit, but actually managing to get across the daggers, not getting hit in a line, losing a couple glaives in the process. But overall, it looks like it's still going to work out for Dimefrain. It's not something Snugglebase can easily push through. These daggers will stop the glaives. The glaives trying to come in, take out as many daggers as they can, losing two more of their number in the process. So, while I see that Snuggle Base is building up more and more daggers, really going for this aggressive strategy, Dying Friend should be able to deflect them at every turn, and that won't be too difficult. Of course, with enough of them that... Oh, that one won't do it, though. Daggers, they have Lion Splash. So, unless Snuggle Base is really careful about their micromanagement of their glaives, they're going to lose more and more glaives. Like, right there. Already two glaives hit by that. Two glaives killed by the defender as a result of that dagger. So this is not working out especially well, and that's the thing, it won't scale in numbers. The number of glaives going up does not help their case against daggers. They need to either split up the daggers, or use warriors or something else to get a bunch of splash damage on the daggers. Glaives are not going to do the trick. So dying front with a counterattack, going into Snuggle Base's commander, or at least going into Snuggle Base's front door, which happens to be where the commander is, but the commander should be fine. They'll they'll jump away, it's not going to be a big deal, and dying friend. Realizing there's not much point going for it, they do pull back a bit. Still, Dimefreund does have a position that they are pretty comfy with. Snuggle Base, on the other hand, it's not terribly behind. They are very focused on trying to get Dimefreund down quickly, but they haven't sacrificed too much in the process. I mean, they have some reclaim as well, which helps, but their static economy is not too far behind. They did lose a lot of units, though. Oh, wow. Like, they have... Yeah, it's a about double metal advantage for lost units for Dime Friend. Dime Friend with the economic advantage on top of that. So Snuggle Base right now, they are not doing well militarily. They're trying, and Dime Friend's commander. Oh, Dime Friend's commander. Oh, this is juicy. This is perfect. Dime Friend's commander being forced into a hole. But some of the glaives are managing to follow, and oh, that is close. Dime Friend managing to save themselves. Putting their commander in a bit of a tight spot, but still managing to save themselves. A bit of influence was exerted, but I don't know that it was enough. With Dime Friend's glaives, or daggers coming in here, Snuggle Base's glaives cannot do as much as they would like. And like I said before, I'd love to see something other than glaives here. I realize that glaives are the fast unit that keeps up with daggers, but in this matchup, you're not going to keep up with daggers. Don't bother. Like, go for something else. Go for... I don't know. Maybe warriors. Or... I don't know about Rocco so much. Or sides. Actually, sides are a bit risky. Ticks, however. Ticks would be awesome. Get in a few ticks, and then this entire mass of daggers is done. So I don't see 
I don't see this working out, but at the same time, we are seeing Snugglebase manage to get some metal value back. Still losing a lot of glaives in the process, but not as many compared to the daggers lost. At any rate, Snugglebase, Snugglebase getting a couple more lotuses up, getting a bit of a more, more robust defensive infrastructure going. Losing the northeast, though. Dianfriend has taken the northeast and the southwest, so Dianfriend's economy is going to be getting explosively ahead in a minute or two. And that's something that Snuggle Base needs to deal with if they want to not lose out. They do have the reclaim, and that's a great replacement for the time being. They have, well, 500 metal reclaim. That's good. At this stage in the game, 500 metal reclaim, reclaim will last them for about a minute, minute and a half, for the amount of reclaim they're doing. And Snugglebase Commander going into the northeast side of the map, trying to take that out, realizing that Dimefriend has built up there. Actually, does Snugglebase have radar coverage? No, they don't. Just an educated guess. With the machine gun. So the northeast being taken out, and Snugglebase doing what they can to stop the daggers from coming in. Thankfully for Snugglebase, daggers do have a hard time going uphill. So Dimefriend not as capable of getting up the hill in order to deal with Snugglebase's assault, and Snugglebase able to take the northeast, or at least get rid of one of the metal extractors, and is indeed taking it for their own purposes. So Snugglebase is not as far behind as it may look. But yeah, the economic advantage for Dimefriend is still putting them in a position where they have a massive territorial advantage, and their military is just harder to deal with. However, they are going to lose a Quill, and that's a forward Quill. That's the kind of Quill you want to have killed. So Dimefriend's basically lost the Northeast. They have the Southwest, though. The Southwest is perfectly theirs. Oh, Anarchid pointing out the ticks are not reliable. Southwest is theirs. Northeast is not. Ticks are apparently not the way to go to deal with daggers, which kind of sucks, because I would say that they're probably really useful. But then again, if they're split up like this, they're also easily dealt with. Penetrators, on the other hand, are a way of dealing with glaives. That was unexpected. I mean, it shouldn't have been too unexpected. We actually could see it over here with the factory construction, but that was unexpected for Snuggle Base. Just losing all the daggers, like that. Because of a giant laser beam. I mean, giant laser beams are always good when they're not pointed at you, but in this case, for that half dozen glaives who didn't even know it hit them, it, it was. Very briefly. And then they quickly stopped being robotics and started being physics. So Dimefriend's commander, still in a forward position, probably hasn't... Actually, I don't know. Man, I'm thinking 14 glaives compared to 4 daggers, a couple lotuses, and a commander who is upgraded with a particle beam. Okay, the particle beam will save them. That's actually enough. But that's irrelevant, though. The daggers being lured out of a position that they can actually have their defenses helping them. Not enough daggers in position anyway in play. How many are there? There's only 7 daggers in play. Snugglebase has managed to wear away a Dimefriend's army enough that it's turning around. At this point, Snugglebase actually gaining the economic advantage even without reclaim. All this destruction over here in the southwest is pretty much what Snugglebase wanted to do. This is working out perfectly for them. Dimefriend is taking the center, and this is a map where you can kind of take the center and cut through with that. But if you have the outside corners and you have them solidly, there's not much your opponent can do. Like, the economic advantage is yours, and you have a bit more of a room to deploy units from the sides to take the center. Now, that's if, they have, if both corners are owned by the same player. And the other player owns the center. It's it's kind of tricky to hold the center at that point. But that's what Dime Friend's going for. They want to take the center. They probably want to just pierce through from the center straight into Snuggle Base's base. And their dagger counts are getting back up. Actually getting quite healthy. So Snuggle Base needs to retreat. I should say has retreated. Realizes that retreating is a good idea. Unfortunately doesn't realize that having their glaives in such a small confined space is a bad idea and loses five of them before even taking out a single dagger thanks to the line splash. So that... that's gotta hurt. Still though, Dimefriend's commander is in a highly vulnerable position and once again we're gonna likely see the... There it is, there's the commander digging. Dimefriend must have a macro on that because that was really bloody fast. Like they had their fingers on the terraform keys. Didn't want to risk anything. Still, though, the center of the map is being taken out. This is what I'm talking about. Being able to deploy forces from the corners down to the center is quite strong. The penetrator is about to go down. There it is. At the cost of all the glaives. But in terms of metal, that is still worth it. However, we can't just look in terms of metal right now because 
Snuggle Base has no army. Snuggle Base has nothing. They've managed to wreck what Dime Throne had to the southwest. They managed to take out quite a bit of Dime Throne's assets, but they haven't managed to actually put themselves in a position where they can continue to maintain pressure. So Dime Throne has a chance to relax, rebuild, and get themselves their territory back. I mean, they never lost the territory. They just lost the structures on it. They can still easily retake the structures. They can still easily rebuild the metal extractors. And now going for the counterattack here. I don't see this working easily, but it might. If the daggers are micro enough, they can get onto the top plateau. This could be it. But Dime Friend decides to not risk it. So this is not going to be it. Instead, going to the lower plateau or lower main area down to the streets. Dealing with stuff there. I mean, I guess that works too, but it was very close. It was possible that that would have done it, but I don't see... I see Dime Friend doesn't want to lose their army either. Realizing Snuggle Base could easily rebuild. I mean, as it is, Snuggle Base has already only taken like two seconds to build a glaive anyway. I mean, both players basically take about three or four seconds to build their mainline units. Although, that being said, there's the scalpels coming in here right now. So, Dime Friend should be able to push with the scalpels and might be able to take the game at that point. Snuggle Base, like I said, hasn't managed to take much territory. They did manage to take a bit of the northeast and defend it pretty heavily. But the scalpels will push through that slowly but surely. The daggers coming in here, if they're properly microed, if they're split up enough the scalpels can't splash them, then Snuggle Base still has this. But it is going to come down to micro. The glaives need to be separated, and they are separated enough. From the looks of it, they are managing to maintain an, a safe distance from each other, stopping the splash damage from wrecking them at all. Not really managing to deal a lot of damage, though, but Dying Friend's getting cold feet. And that's pretty much all you can ask for at this point. Dying Friend doesn't go for the assault, then Snuggle Base can maintain this, can maintain a slightly less bad metal disadvantage. But even then, no, not so much. Dying Friend is still going in, and Snuggle Base does not have a concentrated force to deal with them. And while it is true that you can't easily hit a group of daggers with a group of glaives, hitting them with a single glaive is less useful still. Dime Frame managing to get a bit of an advantage on unit destruction as a result, and that's... I mean, it's a valiant effort coming in from Snuggle Base right now, but they're getting behind an economy. They're getting behind in their military. I mean, they lost all their military in their attempt to take out the center. And take out the Penetrator. And they got rid of the Penetrator, and no further Penetrators have been built. So that's still a big thing. But the big reason they had the economic, or rather the military advantage to do that was because the Penetrator was built in the first place. And at this point, Dime Friend actually has managed to make up for that in their own assaults. And this here could actually, it could be the final blow. Snuggle Base trying to get a bit more concentrated, get their glaives together. Help deal with this. But I don't see this working easily on flat ground. If Snuggle Base can bait Dime Friend in, we could see something. But as it is, on flat ground, with halberds and daggers and scalpels, this is going to come down to either really skillful micro or a bit of luck, and probably really skillful micro. However, as it is, that was pretty intelligent micro. The glaives were spread out in a line that did keep them alive longer than they would have otherwise. Still losing a lot of glaives, but enough that... Looks like Dime Friend is not quite able to get in as well as they would have. Snuggle Base still has the glaives coming in. Most of the daggers are going down here in the front lines. Only five left. The scalpels are a bit of a bigger threat, as the halberds, but all the halberds have gone down. The scalpels are still up, but proper micro will be able to get through the scalpels. And Warrior is finally getting built, and the one that's finally built doesn't actually do anything, thanks to the scalpels. It's a little bit late, but at least it's there. It's still dying throwing flooding in the daggers, keeping the pressure on to Snuggle Base. Snuggle Base managing to maintain the northeast, but under great stress, under great pressure, they have lost all but one of the metal extractors to the northeast, and Dying Friend has comfortably had the southwest this entire game, apart from that one bit where Snuggle Base crushed it. At this point, Snuggle Base does not have much economy to go on, and Dying Friend has more than they know what to do with. They've actually been excessing quite a bit this entire game, and they really just need more energy. That's the main part of it. But yeah, Dying Friend has such a massive economic advantage. They need a bit more energy, but even then, I wouldn't be too worried. That is the one thing that Snuggle Base could get them on, maybe. But at the same time, it means that killing off all these metal extractors isn't going to do that much good. Killing the commander would do a lot of good, but Dime Friend's quite wise to that. They've got their commander well protected. They have loads of defenses around them. They keep their units fairly close, or they have been recently. 
And while the southwest is being broken again... Actually, ooh, this could work. The quill will maybe... No, the quill won't go down. That's that's the one time I'd say don't go for the quill. That would have been suicide. Even as it is, these glaives are on a suicide mission. There's no two ways about it. If the quill goes down, that's at least something. This is actually where I'd say go for the quill, as I normally would, and they didn't. Both quills still alive. The rebuilding of the southwest will happen immediately. Dying Throne basically lost nothing as a result. This is why I say go for the workers. Like that's an object example of that. Or object lesson. And why you should always, always, always go for the workers. Unless you need to retreat in order to go for more workers. But generally speaking, go for the workers. Like, my one exception is because you won't be able to kill others. Is the other workers. Like, only avoid killing workers to kill more workers. This is probably it. They're dying for coming in with the hovercrafts. Sorry, with the daggers. Over to the north. Probably going to take the eastern ramp into Snuggle Base's base. But they want the overwhelming advantage. They want to make sure that they can get in. And they don't even have to. Snuggle Base realizing there's no way out of this. Throws in the towel. Dying Throne takes it. That was actually a fairly even match. I mean, if you look at the unit value, Dying Throne was a bit ahead. But Metal Income, it was still fairly even. Snuggle Base had more units. The problem was just they didn't have much to deal with daggers easily. And it, a lot of it came down to micro. Like, really, really, really careful micro. But... I'm sure a lot of people will argue it also comes down to the daggers being daggers and glaives being glaives. Which is a fair thing to point out. I mean, that's that's a thing, is that daggers do have a bit of an advantage against groups. Whereas glaives don't scale that well. Like, with, with Immaculate Micro, we've seen glaives do well against a hovercraft player. Fielthos demonstrated that last week. But that's still a bit much. I mean, I realize, as I said before... Glaives scale extremely well with micromanagement. But that's kind of difficult to balance a game around. Like when only the top, top, top level of micromanagement can deal with the matchup. I mean, the other options, of course, Warriors, which is pretty strongly defensive. It can kind of work, but then it just pushes scalpels. But then you have Warrior Glaive, you can deal with the scalpels with the Glaives and the Daggers of the Warriors. And it just means the Cloaky moves a lot slower. They're practically playing a shield game at that point. Size, we saw before that those work. Like, going heavy cloak. Going for all the cloak and dagger units, that will also do the trick. But that's, of course, also heavily micromanagement focused. But yeah, <laughs> Anarchid pointing out in the chat that they hadn't actually thought about the dagger AOE. I'm not sure what they were analyzing exactly. They were writing a post for the forum or if they're doing stuff for the actual game design for balance discussion. But apparently forgot that daggers had line AOE. Because they do. And that's a big deal. I'd say that's probably the biggest reason why daggers are able to wreck glaives as effectively as they do. And why the matchup is as skewed as it is, because the Raider game just goes to daggers. As soon as there's more than three or four daggers in a group, the daggers win. Anyway, I'm glad it could help. I'm glad this cast could help in understanding the balance of the game and understanding how to design around the game, and I'm a little bit surprised that Anarchy didn't know offhand that daggers had line splash, but yes, they do. And with that, I'm going to bid you farewell, so thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.